Personnel selected, Dave, Toy Restoration Expert and YouTuber. Channel code name, Toy Poloi. Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and in today's video we're going to be looking at restoring and repairing this vintage Kenner mask jackhammer. Now I picked this up recently at a toy fair, I picked it up from uh, Lawrence at Toy Planet UK. He had the vehicle and he had the helmet but he didn't have the figure and luckily as I was walking around that very toy fair I happened across Cliff Dagger which is the figure to go with this vehicle so I ended up with a pretty complete looking jackhammer but actually on closer inspection it turned out there were a few things that needed working on because there's a bit of damage on the back of it the tires need a bit of work and the front mechanism isn't in the greatest of condition and that's what we're going to fix up today so let's take a closer look at what needs working on then we're going to give this a good clean and then we're going to get repairing so as i say it does need a little bit of work the uh, cliff dagger figure i managed to pick up actually isn't too bad at all. He's got a few little paint rubs on his head there. He needs a bit of a clean as well. He's quite dirty. And the helmet, as you can see, fits on quite nicely. There's a little bit of yellowing on the top of that, but not enough to worry about. So he just needs a good clean and he will be ready to go. When we get onto the jackhammer, this does need some work. As I say, I noticed straight away the tyres uh, were starting to split. This is a very common problem with all of these mask vehicles. You can see that the rubber starts to split. Where uh, the plastic has joined or the rubber has been joined, it tends to split. I would say someone has actually had a go at gluing some of these. Uh, there's a little bit of glue there and I can see some sort of excess glue on this back one here, but the front one is starting to split, so we will repair that. Then the uh, front mechanism here is very stiff. It's supposed to sort of uh, slide up when you push this button down. It sort of slides up. You can see it's really quite awkward to do. Uh, and the front panel sort of pops down and there are some guns that are spring loaded in there. Everything just seems a little bit awkward and a little bit um, like it doesn't want to move. So I may take that apart and see if we can fix it. There's some chrome wear on the front, but probably not enough to worry about. It normally happens where, uh, you know, kids bash this against things. So you can see there's a chrome worn off there and a little bit on the uh, uh, hubs as well of the tyres. But I'm not sure I'll actually do much about that. Once those are clean, they'll probably uh, look quite nice. The main issue is around the back here. This uh, separate mechanism, when you press the back of this, will pop up and there should be some guns and a seat that flips out. So if I press that, you can see it popped up but we are missing the guns. The seat is broken. There are some arms on the sort of front part of this seat here, which should pull the guns out. Those are snapped off and missing. So I need to uh, find a complete replacement of that part and get that fixed up. Shouldn't be too hard to do. And I've had a quick look around, so um, hopefully I'll be able to find that part. It's also missing. There's a gun that should go in here, a tiny little gun that you can pull out and pops into that hole there. That is also missing, so I need to find that. The stickers as well aren't in too bad condition, so I, I may end up making some new stickers for this, but overall they're not looking too bad. There's a little bit of wear to them, as you can see, but actually they're all in place. I don't think there are any missing. So I'll, I'll make some replacement stickers for other people to use, but I don't think I actually need to replace them on this. But the first thing I think I need to do, as with all toys, especially when I pick them up from toy fairs, is to give them a good clean. This one doesn't look particularly dirty. I can see there's quite a lot of dust inside but you don't know what's happened to this over the years, who's played with it, you know, where it's been stuck, what's been dribbled on it, all that sort of thing. So I'm gonna give this a good clean with some hot soapy water, get off all the dust and dirt. And once that's done, we can start fixing it up and getting it working again. After a good wash, it's already looking a whole lot better. I'm a little concerned by these tires. They are really quite split. This one is barely held on. So that's the first thing I'm going to repair now that it's all clean. Shouldn't take too long to do and I think should be quite a simple fix. So let's get on with that and then we can start taking this apart and replacing the pieces and fixing the other pieces inside that we need to work on. So for this tire, I'm just going to be using some super glue and my tool here, which I've made, which is a pin stuck in an old paintbrush step 
stem. Basically I'm going to put some super glue on this bit of scrap paper and then I'm going to use the pin to carefully apply it inside the uh, broken part of the tyre here. Then we can push those two surfaces together and stick it uh, sort of firmly. I don't want to do apply the super glue straight from the bottle because that's just messy. If you use a pin or some sort of small uh, dabbing device uh, you have so much more control over where it goes and you don't end up with glue everywhere. It looks like whoever repaired this one has done it uh, straight from the bottle and you can see there's glue everywhere. So I'm going to carefully repair this one. This rear tyre here as well is starting to split so I will repair that one. I think the other ones seem fine. So yeah a little bit of super glue onto a piece of paper and then carefully applied using a pin and we should be able to fix this quite easily. Now that those are repaired we can go ahead and take this apart. It looks fairly simple to uh, take apart. There are a couple of screws on the bottom that you can see. I've got one here and one here. That one at the back looks like it holds this sort of section that pops up. If I pop that up it's sort of lined up so I will probably leave that one till last. So there's one in the middle there. There's also some screws that you can see if we rotate this top section there's a screw there, one there, likewise on the other side and then there's another screw hidden under the bonnet. If we flip this bonnet back you can see there is a screw there. So I'm just going to take all of those out and see what happens. As I've never taken uh, this vehicle apart before, there's a little bit of sort of guesswork in uh, what you need to do. So I'm just going to uh, take them off and uh, see what happens. There may be more hidden, but I can't see any initially. Uh, so yeah, yeah, let's just get unscrewing and see what happens. So after taking out all of those screws I seem to be no further along. The uh, car is still firmly held together and I thought actually I knew that uh, someone else had taken one of these apart fairly recently so I had a quick look at uh, Vintage Toy Rush Dave's uh, YouTube channel because I know he's worked on one of these and it turns out that this is an absolute pig of a vehicle to take apart and uh, watching his video I sort of decided I'm not even going to bother taking the rest of this apart because it, it seems unnecessary at this point. According to his video there is a screw hidden under this bonnet but to get the bonnet out you've got to sort of bend a clip on the inside. Also just under the doors the uh, chassis is a sort of plastic welded all along here and all along here so you have to uh, break a, a, a sort of a glued joint along those two parts and it does look possible when he has done it on his video but for uh, my restoration it seems like a sort of pointless uh, task to go through so I'm going to say if you want to see how to take this fully apart uh, check out his video at this point I'm going to sort of not go down that route because I think I can actually get this part out which is the piece I really need to fix without taking the rest of the toy apart so I'm going to do that and uh, I'll leave this portion although this mechanism doesn't work completely perfectly it works well enough but sometimes what doing when doing a toy restoration you have to sort of step back and sort of take a, a look at what you're doing and whether fixing it is going to make that much of a difference especially if fixing it involves doing quite a lot of work and potentially damaging uh, some other area of it. It. And in this instance, I don't think the sort of the fact that me this mechanism doesn't work perfectly is worth risking breaking the rest of the toy. So I'm going to sort of take a step back. And, but uh, if you want to see how it's done, uh, check out the uh, Vintage Toy Rush video. Uh, it's, he's done a, a good job on there. But I'm going to get on with fixing this. So I'm going to put those screws back in, and then I will take out that one f little screw there, which holds this section in, and then we can work on uh, repairing and replacing the uh, bits missing on that one. But uh, for now, I'm going to put those other screws back in. So I reckon. 
reckon to get this rear section out, which is spring loaded here, there is this single screw sort of hidden under the axle. And that looks like if I unscrew that, I should be able to get this top section out. So let's just give that a go. I'll get my screwdriver in there. And we'll unscrew that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. It is now released. I can see there's a big spring in there, so everything is spring loaded. That's a very similar spring to something used in the uh, ATST by uh, my reckoning. I'm going to leave that screw where it is because it looks like it's going to be quite awkward to get back in. In fact, I have just knocked it out. Nope, that's all right. So I'm going to leave that sort of on its side so the screw stays where it should be. We can now take a look at this and see what's up with it. So you can see this portion is uh, broken. There should be some pegs coming off the bottom of this and they go up and there's a bit of a sort of a gray plastic gun that pops out the uh, top there. That is all missing. But I've asked around with some uh, fellow mask collectors and Mark, who goes by the name of 80s Collector on Instagram, just happened to have a jackhammer in a beaten up and battered condition, but it still had this entire section in the back of it. So he's very kindly sent me this. So this is what we need. This is the replacement chair. So you can see here at the bottom of the chair, if I rotate around, there should be these sort of posts pointing down. These attached to the gun section. What we've got to do now is just take this apart and swap in the uh, new piece. So there's four screws on the bottom of that. I'll undo those screws and hopefully it should be quite obvious where this piece slots in and then we can replace that nice and easily. Okay, so that's taken apart. So we can see here, this is the new seat with the gun piece still attached. And there's the old seat. I'm hoping that this just sort of slots in. It doesn't look like there's much that uh, happens to this mechanism. Basically, when the seat rolls forwards, it pulls the gun in. And as you roll the seat back, it sort of pushes the gun back out. So I think we can just uh, simply just slot that in. There's no particular areas I need to worry about. So we take the top section, drop that over. And we can just sort of test that that works, make sure everything does line up. Does that feel like it's lining up? No, it feels like there's something catching there. What if I not lined up? I think it's just that back piece there. So let's push that in. Does it feel like it's working? No, that doesn't feel like it's lined up quite properly. So let's rearrange that. With these mask toys, everything generally has to line up really quite neatly. If you get it wrong, it won't work. Oh, right, so I can see, I think uh, these two posts here on either side of the seat are quite key, so they've got to line up really neatly. Yeah, there we go, that's it. So now, when the seat's out, the guns pop out, and if I push this seat back up, you can see it pulls the guns in. So it's all of this section here, which was completely missing on this one, which does all of the sort of key pieces. So um, that is gonna work very nicely. Right, I can screw this all back together and then we'll put it back on the jackhammer. So that is now all working, the screws are in and you can see that as I fold the seat back, the guns come out fold the seat down, the guns go back in. So that is good. We've now got to put this back onto the rear end of the jackhammer and that's where this spring is. So there is a washer that goes on top of that spring. That fell out when I was taking it apart. So you can see it's a clear washer. That needs to go on the top there. But actually the first thing we've got to do is get the screw in the bottom because I did uh, sort of turn this over and the screw fell out. So here is the screw. It also has a tiny washer on it. And the trick to getting this in is to do this bit first. So I'm going to put this on my screwdriver like that. And I'm going to carefully put that into the underside of the jackhammer so that it comes through. So you can see there's the screw inside the spring. And now, holding everything together and lining everything up, I can put this back together. So the washer needs to go inside here over the post, like so. We can then push that spring in like that. And hopefully we'll line the screw up into the hole and I can just start screwing that down. Yeah, that's all lined up. We'll get that screwed in nice and tight, and then that section should work and pop up nicely, and the gun should work. That feels good. So if I lock this down, like so, then press the button, it will pop up, and then we can flip this seat down, and the guns pop out like that. Looking very nice.
Now the stickers on this jackhammer aren't in too bad condition. They're a little bit worn on the side, but I like that sort of aged effect that they have. And if we uh, move this sort of uh, section back, this sort of windshield section, that sticker's not too bad. These ones are looking a little bit tatty, but I don't think these are worth replacing. We can uh, re-stick them. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But overall, they are looking not too bad. They're a little bit battered, but as I say, I think that sort of suits the age of this vehicle. But what I will do is I will uh, use the scans that I have of the stickers and I'll make a, a sort of modern version that you can download from toyploy.com. So if you want uh, versions of these stickers to put on your jackhammer, go there, download them, print them onto glossy sticky backed printer paper, and you will be able to uh, sort of stick them back onto your jackhammer. But as you can see, these ones, they are just coming away a bit. And I've shown this many times before how I uh, go about re-sticking stickers that are slightly loose like that. I use Pritt stick. It's a water-based uh, glue stick. It looks a bit odd. You know, it's one of those ones that you can uh, push out like that. But it's ideal for sticking these stickers on because it doesn't damage the plastic and it doesn't damage the stickers. All I use is a screwdriver just to get a little bit of the glue on the end of the screwdriver. And then you can carefully lift up where the uh, stickers are sort of losing their stick, rub that glue onto the underside of it, and then stick them back down and they stick really nicely. It doesn't damage the toy, doesn't damage the stickers, but it stops them coming up any more in future. So I'm going to go and fix all of these. It only seems to be these ones at the front that are a little bit loose. Everything else seems to be stuck on quite firmly. So just a little bit more glue on those and those will be fine. Now, I wasn't really intending on repairing the chrome on the front of these, but actually that bottom bumper, it's got so much chrome missing. I thought just for a quick fix, I will uh, sort of put some uh, new chrome paint on it. So I'm going to be using the uh, Molotow liquid chrome pens that I've shown you before. The trick with these is to leave them to dry for a long time in a warm place. So I will probably stick this uh, jackhammer in my airing cupboard for a couple of weeks. Uh, it really dries nice and solid then. If you don't let it dry, when you touch the chrome, it will dull very quickly. Uh, but you can put a top coat on it, but if you've got an airbrush, but I don't generally use an airbrush, so I just like to be patient, stick this in an airing cupboard and it will set perfectly well, but you just have to be patient with it. So I've got uh, this Molotow chrome pen here. I'm gonna give it a good shake. I'm only gonna do the bumper part. I'm not gonna do the rest of it. There's a few little sort of marks on the uh, hubcaps, but really they are minor. So I'll just do that bumper piece there and then we can sort out the missing gun. On the back of the jackhammer when it's transformed there should be a tiny gun there's a small hole that you can just see there on that little post now this gun is often missing and is incredibly hard to find so i have to say a massive thank you again to mark the 80s collector on instagram because he's made me a little reproduction of this gun i think he's taken a cast of the original one and cast it in resin so i can use this to uh, finish the vehicle so that either slots in there like that when it's uh, transformed into its sort of attack mode and when not in use you can take the gun out and inside the bottom just underneath that section there is a space for you to drop that gun it just sits in like that so again when we transform it we take the figure out put that down that gun is held in place and hidden in the bottom but when you want it in the attack mode press that flip the seat out we can carefully get that gun out it takes small fingers to get that out and then we can pop that in there and there you go that is the uh, completed vehicle i've now got every part i needed for the jackhammer and there we go that is the now complete jackhammer so uh, as you can see sometimes when you start a project you go down one route thinking oh well i'm going to do this and then realize actually there's no point in taking something completely apart because you can actually fix it without doing all of that and as i say if you want to see how to take this vehicle completely apart then check out the uh, vintage toy rush channel and that uh, you'll be able to see how he does it but um for in this instance it really wasn't necessary I was able to swap out the part with just taking this back section off. So I need to say a massive thank you to uh, Mark, the 80s collector, for helping me out uh, with these missing pieces. If you want to get the stickers for your own jackhammer, then head on over to toyploy.com. I have put the version of the stickers that I've made up there. You can download it for free, along with a whole selection of other mask-related stickers. So do go and check all of those out. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.